Greetings, Earthlings. Today I'm back with a review of a brand new audio interface from frickin' Solid State Logic. How cool is that? So today we're reviewing the SSL2 Plus, not to be confused with the SSL2. However, I will discuss the differences between those two interfaces a little bit later in the video. If you are interested in this audio interface, it will set you back around $280. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for the majority of this review, I have the Rode NT1 connected directly to the interface. 48 volts turned on and my gain set at around 1145 without the analog 4k switch enabled I won't do any kind of post processing, but I might boost it in post so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did now Let's talk about what comes in the box Of course you are going to get the interface a USB-C to USB-C cable a USB-C to USB-A cable and some compliance information with a URL to download all the manuals and software. Then, as far as the build quality of the interface, it feels good for the most part. It does have a plastic housing around the side with a metal faceplate. The dials are all well attached with minimal wobble to them, and all of the buttons have a really nice tactile feedback, but the XLR port has a tiny bit of give to it. On the top of the interface, you'll find two identical channels, each which have independent 48 volt phantom power switches, which is always amazing to see. You'll also find a line and high Z button. You'll need to press the line button to change from the XLR to quarter inch line level input, and you'll need to press the line and high Z button to change from XLR to the quarter inch instrument level input. Then you have somewhat of a lackluster meter which goes in 10 decibel increments. You'll find the gain dial for each of the channels. And lastly, you'll find this really cool legacy 4K switch which adds a high frequency EQ boost and as SSL describes it, finely tuned harmonic distortion. Then when you move a little bit farther to the right, you will find an LED indicator to let you know if the interface is plugged in and getting power from the USB port you'll find this giant blue monitor level control, which goes to 11. How cool is that? You'll also find two headphone volume controls for headphones A and B, as well as a three and four button, which is next to the phone's B volume control. And this allows you to change what is being output to the second set of headphones. If you don't press this down, phones B will just get the exact same mix as phones A, but if you do press this down and you set up a separate mix in your DAW, it will allow the second headphones wearer to get a separate mix. Next, you'll find a monitor mix dial to mix between zero latency monitoring as well as computer playback. And next to that, you'll find a stereo button, which allows you to monitor your inputs as a stereo pair or down mix to a mono signal. Then on the back of the interface, you'll find a USB-C port to connect it to your computer, a pair of MIDI in and out ports to connect any kind of MIDI devices, two sets of headphone outputs, two sets of RCA outputs, a set of balanced quarter inch monitor outputs, and a set of Neutrik XLR combination jacks for XLR or quarter inch inputs. And to wrap up the walkthrough on the front of the device where you typically find headphone ports, there is nothing. There is nothing on the front of this thing. Next up, as far as the specs of this interface, it has a bit depth of up to 24 bit and a sampling rate up to 192 kilohertz. It has a gain range of 62 decibels, an EIN of negative 130.5 dBA, a dynamic range of 110.5 dB, an input impedance of 1.2 kilo ohms, plus 48 volts phantom power, and here is some headphone output specs if you're interested in that information. Now I want to do a very quick test to demonstrate what the legacy 4K switch does for spoken word. So right now I'm speaking into the Rode NT1 and I do not have that switch enabled. And here is how the audio is sounding. 
And now I've engaged the Legacy 4K switch and you can hear in the upper frequencies that it is much more pronounced and you can also start to hear a little bit of distortion or grittiness or graininess if you're looking for that kind of character for your spoken word recordings. And now just to see what a classic microphone plugged into the SSL2 Plus sounds like, I have connected the Neumann U87 in cardioid mode with no filters on directly to the device and here is how the audio sounds with my gain set at around 1145 on the gain dial without the 4K switch enabled. And now I have engaged the 4K switch on the SSL2 Plus for the Neumann U87, and here is how the audio sounds with that analog circuit engaged. Now to really test out the preamps of the SSL2 Plus, I've connected the SM7B directly to it without any cloud lifter or FET head. I had to increase my gain to about 9 on the dial, and here is how it sounds without the 4K switch enabled. But when I engage that 4K switch, you can really start to hear the SM7B open up, and I actually really think that this 4K circuit complements a darker microphone like the 7B quite nicely. But now I've switched that back off and I will go ahead and be quiet so you can hear what kind of background noise is generated by the preamps with the gain set this high. Now let's go ahead and measure the noise floor of the preamp with and without the 4K switch enabled. Now let's go ahead and see what this interface does in terms of latency. So first up with a sample rate of 48 kilohertz and an IO buffer size of 64 samples, we have a round trip latency of nine milliseconds and an output latency of 4.4 milliseconds. When we jump up to 128 samples, we have an 11 and a half millisecond round trip latency and 5.7 milliseconds output. And then when we jump to 256 samples, we have a 17 millisecond round trip or eight and a half millisecond output. Then when we jump to a sample rate of 192 kilohertz and an IO buffer size of 64 samples, we get a round trip latency of 6.9 milliseconds, la mau, as well as a round trip latency of 3.3 milliseconds. When we jump up to 128 samples, we have 7.6 milliseconds round trip, or 3.7 milliseconds output, and at 256 samples, we get 9 milliseconds round trip, or 4.3 milliseconds output. Now I want to go ahead and test out the instrument performance of this device. So I will play an electric guitar and an electric bass directly into it with and without the 4K switch enabled and without any kind of amp simulator so you can really hear what the input sounds like. And then I will turn on the amp sims and put it into a full mix so you can hear what it would sound like in that kind of scenario.
for Davey. Now let's briefly talk about the differences between the SSL2, which unfortunately I don't have, and the SSL2+. Plus. First thing I want to point out is the preamps on both the SSL2 and SSL2 Plus are the exact same, so you're not really sacrificing anything in that department if you go with the cheaper unit. But where they do start to differ is the SSL2 only has a single headphone output. It also only has a single set of balanced quarter inch monitor outputs. So if you're looking for a pair of RCA outputs to run to your DJ deck, the SSL2 Plus is the one that has those. And the last difference that I'm able to spot is that the SSL2 Plus has the MIDI in and out, while the SSL2 completely lacks that option. All right, so I have been waiting ages for one of these classic studio gear manufacturers to release an affordable audio interface, and I am beyond thrilled that they finally woke up and did it, and I can honestly say... I think it was totally worth the wait. And first up, in terms of pros, the preamps on the SSL2 and 2 Plus are insane, with a gain range of 62 dB and an EIN of negative 130.5 dBU. It is perfectly capable of driving even an SM7B cleanly without the need for a cloud lifter or a FET head. Additionally, I love the fact that they have individual phantom power on off buttons for each channel. That makes it really easy to run a condenser microphone mixed with a ribbon microphone without having to worry about accidentally sending phantom power to a microphone that could be damaged by it. Also, the DI inputs on this thing sound insanely good on the electric guitar and electric bass. It also has a feature that mutes the channel when you turn on or off 48 volts phantom power to avoid any kind of pops or clicks going into your ears or coming out of your studio monitors, which is a really neat thing to add. Another pro is the fact that they included a mix dial to mix between zero latency and computer playback, which is a feature that I think every single audio interface needs. Directly next to that, it also gives you the option to monitor your inputs as a stereo set if you're stereo micing something, or as a mono mix down if you have two microphones for spoken word going into it. And another pro, because this video isn't long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I know it's really long. I love the versatility and the addition of the analog legacy 4K switch. It gives some really nice character if you want it, and I really liked it on the SM7B because the boost in the upper frequencies really opened up the darker sound of that microphone. You also have two sets of RCA outputs, which can be really beneficial if you're a DJ because you can send two separate mixes to each of those outputs. I love the fact that there are two sets of headphone outputs, which is great if you have two people recording, and if this matters to you at all, it is bus powered, meaning you don't need to have any kind of external power brick to power it. It is just powered over the USB cable. And then in terms of cons, the first thing I don't like is the meters. I would like to see a lot more detail on there because jumping from negative 10 to 0 dBs is quite a drastic jump. I would have liked to have seen negative 6 and negative 3 in there as well. I also would have liked to have seen the headphone ports on the front of the device for easier access and so you don't have to route the cable all the way around to the rear of the device. It also lacks an on off switch which is a huge bummer, sad face. Arrgh. And this last one really isn't a con, it is more of a suggestion for SSL. Since you have to push the line and high Z buttons to engage the instrument input, it would be nice to be able to push the high Z button and that changes the impedance of the XLR microphone input to allow you a little bit more versatility in the tones you're able to get out of it and the character you're able to get out of your microphone like some vintage preamps had. So would I recommend the SSL2 and SSL2 Plus? Absolutely. I think this is an insanely good sounding audio interface, especially at the price. However, I think a lot of the features are mainly geared towards musicians, and they're not something that you would really use in a day-to-day -day voiceover situation. So why would you pick one of these SSL devices over a more feature-packed device like the Motu M2? Mainly because of the preamps. They have 62 dB gain range, an EIN of negative 130.5, and the coolest and most unique feature 
is the analog legacy 4K switch. And since the majority of audio interfaces, preamps, and A to D converters are so clean and distortion free now, it can get a little bit boring or sterile in the box. So that 4K switch allows you to bring back some of that analog distortion that people seem to like so much and breathe some life back into that sterile recording. All right, so that was the SSL2 Plus. I would love to hear from you in the comments. Do you think this is a cool interface? Are the features things that you would use in a recording session, or is it just something that would not benefit you at all? And if you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. If you want more videos, subscribe by clicking that logo down beneath me. And if you're still here, here's a secret for you. You can head over to podcastage.com slash giveaways, and I have two giveaways going right now. Go win some free stuff. And lastly, if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing, beautiful, lovely people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you later. Bye.